Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Superstars of Wrestling Review Series. The 14th of July, 1990, is our episode today. Unfortunately, the next two episodes of July are uh, MIA, at least thus far in my search. But hopefully we can get to something for um, the those fill-ins eventually. Don't know how that's going to work, but... My goal is to do as many Superstars series as we can. We also are going to do other territories, so those will be coming. I'm focusing on Superstars for the next couple of weeks, trying to get as many of those done as we can. Uh, anyhow, the 14th of July, we're about six weeks out from SummerSlam 90, the third SummerSlam, and um, goes without saying, uh, we kind of have some matches set, but we're going to get more of those in the months to come, or the month to come here. Jake Roberts uh, against Paul Diamond, and kind of get things going there. Of course, Roberts going to go heads up with Bad News Brown at SummerSlam. It has not been officially announced yet, I don't think. Short shots by Roberts, and a uh, punch or two, um, and Diamond eventually becomes Cato of the Orient Express within the next couple of months. Not a lot of people know that. Well, I suppose hardcores know that, but not the average fan. Uh, anyway, so a DDT. After short clothesline, Roberts gets the victory, and he is certainly in peak condition for his foray into Bad News Brown's Sewer Rat versus Snake Land. Uh, Hogan cuts promo, says he's not going to retire, says he considered it pretty strongly that, uh, man upstairs, a.k.a. God, has a plan, and, and, uh, every time he was down, he was looking at the, uh, letters and cards and all this at the Hulkamaniac extent. He can't walk away. He's going to, uh, team with Tugboat and, um, manage to... Eradicate the earthquake from the World Wrestling Federation. Not a huge surprise here. Of course, I'm sure fans at the time, many childlike fans, thought Hogan wouldn't return. He's off filming, filming another B to C level movie. Uh, Tugboat is up next in this particular um, episode, and he is uh, facing an enhancement talent here. Fans, well, kids, actually, are um, solidly behind the good old Tugger. And I, I can't say adults would be, but that it is what it is. Um, I don't think I caught the name of the enhancement talent. Tugboat, though, uses power early. Uh, hits a lot of heavy strikes. Um, Irish whip and a big back body drop which we barely see any of. He looks like he landed awkward. He looks like he landed with his leg uh, pulled in, big splash in the corner, and then a big splash in the middle, uh, or actually from the second rope by Tugboat. One, two, three, and victory. Uh, then we go to an event center plugging the that night's events at the Boston Garden. Akeem is promised by Slick, and Akeem promises himself he's going to destroy Hercules, um, then we go to a mini promo where uh, Nikolai Volkov promises to defend the American's honor and um, lead to, that means, the uh, eradication and elimination of Boris Zukov, which he promises. Um, the Orient Express, speaking of... Uh, uh, Mr. Fuji and tag teams and all that. Sato and Tanaka up here in an enhancement match. Pat Tanaka around for a couple of years here. Uh, one of the best uh, heels at the time and I think gets a, a little underrated because he was only part of a tag team and, and the tag team never got the complete push. Anyway, tag off to Sato. Sato is here for a much shorter span of time, only a few months. I don't know if that was the plan when he came in or what happened there. But the tag team ended early, but he is dominant. And um, 
the Orient Express, guided, of course, by Mr. Fuji. Fuji giving advice from the outside uh, and, you know, chokes and all of that. Uh, then we kind of see uh, a big kick and, uh, uh, you know, the, the, I guess, Liger Bomb style power bomb by the Orient Express to finish things off. Hillbilly Jim uh, mentions about fighting Haku. Uh, he says that he is heads up with Haku. Haku likes to kick people from behind. Hillbilly would rather take you on face to face. Um, Earthquake against Jim Duggan promises to squash Duggan. Once and for all, no Jimmy Hart in that promo, oddly enough. Uh, the Barbarian, alongside Bobby Heenan, is here. Uh, Barbarian, as a single, doesn't really get a major push, but actually does get some some um, traction as far as just being a more aggressive guy. Of course, that taking place in the spring-ish time, right before WrestleMania VI, that, that turn. Uh, Barbarian dressing in fur. Red Tyler, his opponent, who takes a good number of chops and shots that he doesn't want to take. Heenan wearing some sort of headset, which is kind of weird. Uh, Barbarian using immense power, forearms and strikes. Uh, suplex here and there, but more ground and pound style. Actually, more pound than ground. Um, big boot and a superplex by the Barbarian. And, uh, then we see the plug for the August 27th SummerSlam. So as mentioned, SummerSlam at the end of the month of August, the third installment. Still a big deal here. Um, the Hard Foundation up next on the Brother Love Show. Brother Love causing a bit of... Chaos, calling the hearts uh, cowards indirectly. Hearts saying the real cowards are the guys that are wearing the paint, basically calling demolition yellow. Calls them out and says a, a real tag match is two on two. Uh, Anvil says, why don't we go to the ring and settle this now? Uh, three on two in the ring. And before that can even happen, demolition starts the fight in the aisle way. So we've got a brawl between the... Uh, members of Demolition and the Heart Foundation that doesn't really get settled, so we're putting a little steam on that Tag Team Championship match. Uh, kicks and punches in the corner on uh, the in the next match as Coco Beware takes on Buddy Rose. Rose and uh, Coco Ware have, I think, wrestled before. I want to say they wrestled on a Saturday night's main event, too. I could be wrong, though. Uh, Coco manages to splash himself into the corner, and, uh, Rose uses his weight a little bit, um, not in a very productive way if you're Coco Ware, but a very productive way if you're Buddy Rose. Uh, Irish whip, and duck of the clothesline by Coco, Coco with a shoulder tackle, and again, Coco's been around now for going on four years, in the WWF, I think he stays till sometime in late 93. So I think he gets uh, a total of uh, almost seven years. And to be in there. Bulldog by Coco gets him a victory. And then we see, uh, I believe it's Tony Ulysses up next in a, an enhancement match alongside Mr. or against Mr. Perfect, of course, with Bobby Heenan. Perfect still, you're in a continental champion, headed towards the uh, the SummerSlam match, which at this point, I believe, is still Beefcake. I don't know that it becomes Tix Tornado until sometime in uh, late August, about 10 days, two weeks before the pay-per-view uh, is the official announcement, something like that. Uh, Henning goes around and around with the enhancement talent, actually gives him a bit. Uh, but comes back with a drop kick right on the butt of the chin. And um, uh, then, you know, kind of hits the kick out of the corner. 
super uh, or perfect flex and a victory for Kurt Henning. Um, Henning looks to be in probably one of the better shapes of his career. I'd say eighty six through ninety was his was his good run. That four year span, he had, didn't join the WWF till eighty eight. But I'd say the end of his uh, AWA run, he was in good shape. Uh, with Rhythm Blues promise to tune up the uh, Bushwhackers, and Hacksaw Duggan says he's going to bring it to the Boston Garden and the Earthquake. Uh, that'll close us for today. We'll be back with more right after this.